so so what about what? Let's maybe that's perfect. Tell me more about childhood, because I feel like I feel like you are you Canadian or or, or Coloradian? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm Canadian. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm just like just north of Montana, like Glacier National Park. I'm like 30 minutes north of there. I think maybe it's because so. of some of the videos that you post on social media or something that to me I've been like, those look like the Rockies. Is this guy in Canada? In Canada <laughs> right, Canada, yeah. Canada? Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, the Rockies, my, my mind immediately goes to Colorado because that's the only place the Rockies are allowed to exist. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, and like we, we call them the Canadian Rockies up here. Well, <laughs> there like, you go. Well, the mountains don't care. They just... They just stretch along their the, range. the mountains. Call call <laughs> yeah. us what you want. Many people have called yeah. us other things, right? Yeah. Well, you like I've done you... I've done hikes where there's the border, and it's like, oh wait, where's the border? <laughs> like, like the mount the mountains don't really care about that kind of thing. Yeah. Isn't that the funniest thing? That... You've got yeah. your Canadian Rockies, and we've got our Canadian bacon, and and really, yeah, <laughs> the ham doesn't care what we call it. The mountains don't care what. It I heard a little while yeah. ago this. Uh, heard or was it something actually it might have been something in an article i was reading and i don't know it it sounds kind of fuzzy too so like i'm not sure exactly how verifiable this is if it's maybe more just something to think about that um but something like uh astronauts who have gone far enough up into the atmosphere or out of it to be able to look back and see the entire earth uh right tend to come back with like far less of a uh partisan i'm from this country you're from that kind of idea and far more of a you know we're all humans on the same planet kind of idea which makes sense you know but yeah it, it, it is a little bit funny like in my mind i can't help it anytime i see like a photo of the earth like imagining where the borders are you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's let's get some get some context that, uh, like a firm footing here yeah, right exactly. like <laughs> yeah so, yeah. so you, have you lived there in Canada all your life, or have you moved around a bit? Tell me about your uh, young life, your childhood. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a hobbit. I kind of like that's beautiful. Staying close to the Shire, like, mm -hmm. like, like, have I was kind of blessed to go on a bunch of different trips or vacations, but like, yeah, I, I like sticking around close to home. So, yeah, I've kind of grown up in this area. Um, it started. I guess I uh, started piping at around nine or so, like mm. me, my two brothers and my dad all started learning at the same time. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, so it was like, oh, I, my poor mom, that's a, yeah. that's, a, that's a noisy household. All of them, all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of always grew up in this area, grew up on a cattle ranch, so like you know, riding I, horses I, all I the time and all allowed, that. I didn't know you were allowed to have cattle ranches up there. I thought we were the only ones. It, and, it, and it had to be in Texas. If you're not right. if you're outside Texas, it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, actually, our, our family brand, actually, it, it kind of came with the ranch. And my parents had bought it. Uh, but, yeah, it was a guy from Texas who had come up. There. And then started ranching. So there, so there is a Got bit of a Texas connection, connection there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only Texans then, know how to know how to raise beef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then like went to uh, the city for for schooling, and and then kind of came back. Like I'm about an hour south of where I grew up, so kind of came back to mm. this area and. Um, like I live in, right now, I live in a town of three thousand people, so it's wow. like you know, kind of a, sm a small town, but uh, it's close to the mountains. Can get out hiking and every yeah, single so. person in town must know that somebody there plays bagpipes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like I'm the bagpiper in yeah. town, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Let's see. I'm trying yeah. to orient myself. I'm the, I am the classic ignorant American. I I know my major Canadian cities on the two coasts, but you know, right yeah, there, right there in the middle, man. What what is there in the middle? Well, it's funny. We make fun of uh, ignorant Americans, but then it's like, well, if you ask me, like, who the president is half the time, like, I mean, I don't. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it kind of goes both ways. <laughs> so yeah, like. The, we have the East Coast, right? Like uh, the Maritimes, mm -hmm. Nova Scotia, PEI, all that. And then we have um, like working our way um, 
like west mm -hmm. then we we get into ontario like quebec ontario sure and then we have these like the bread basket like these three prairie provinces manitoba saskatchewan and alberta yeah and then at the west edge of alberta it's you're kind of getting off the great prairies and now getting into mountains and that's kind of where i live is like my wife's from saskatchewan so she's it'd be like kansas like just the middle of the prairie mm. so in the town we're at she can look east and see her canola fields <laughs> and i can look west and see the rocky mountains so That's we're kind of beautiful so we're like we're we're both happy on the transition zone yeah. of the mountain and the prairie so and yeah. then it, you keep going west you get into british columbia which is a lot of mountain and forest and then and vancouver's there on the coast which is probably one of those major cities that you you hear of yeah yeah i wonder maybe i'm remembering wrong when i was a kid i so i grew up um well, I grew up down here in Utah, but my, my mom's from Washington State, and that's how I know some of the Western Canadian places, because she's oh, from okay. right on the border, and so they used to go up into the, up uh, up north into British Columbia and stuff all the time. Yeah. And then my, but then my dad's from, grew up in South Dakota, and we used to go back and visit just about every summer, and we'd go to the Black Hills there. And right. I, I have this sense that the, um, uh, what what was the Sioux name? Pa it was like Paha Sapa, something like that. Was the was the Sioux the, the Lakota Sioux name for the Black Hills? And I oh, had okay. I had this sense that that meant something about bread baskets, and so it's fun that you, that you know oh, then go straight north and, and you, you said bread basket, you know, and I thought, oh, that's. But so maybe I'm remembering that wrong. My uh, <laughs> if if Jeremy is listening, then uh, uh, if Jeremy way too twag, you know, if he's listening, he probably is uh, tearing, <laughs> tearing his hair out right now. Going, James, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but but uh, no, okay, so so I'm orienting myself now for like where my my visits to the plains south. Yeah, of here and being like, yeah, okay, that, absolutely. That yeah, because just. Colder. <laughs> Yeah, straight north of North Dakota would be like Saskatchewan mm -hmm. and, and Winnipeg, kind of both, both straight up there. Yeah. I'm oriented then. So, so did you impress your wife by saying Saskatchewan without starting to stutter? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the the people from Saskatchewan make fun because they say uh, like everyone in all of the rest of Canada <laughs> says it differently than the people uh, who live yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so then then did your brothers and your dad keep piping too, or are you the one guy who's carried it on? Uh so yeah, my my dad kept piping, and mm -hmm. so about uh, probably about hour and a half ish away, there was a, a a city like a smaller city, but they have like a grade five mm -hmm. pipe band. So he he w ended up piping with them and playing with them. Um, and he passed away a, a three years ago, a few years mm. ago. So, so he basically piped as long as he could. And then my younger brother was more the rebel. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, he went into guitar, which <laughs> normally, normal families, guitar is like a normal thing to do. But The rebel would have been playing the pipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But in our family, it was like, oh, piping is the normal thing. And yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, and he's kind of got busy and hasn't kept up with music that much, but, uh, but like he's got a guitar and a mm -hmm. mandolin and a, so, but he, he really is, I think in some ways he's blessed and cursed with this like perfect pitch musical ear. Oh, I see. Cause like, I'd be like with my small pipes out of tune, like jamming with my friend on his guitar we're in two different keys we have no idea what any of this just means and we're just time. like making noise and having fun yeah. oh come play with us bring your bull run and he comes and his like his ears are flattened back like a yeah. cat hearing a bad noise it. and he just like can't get out of our apartment fast enough so it's like i feel like my ear had to develop over time so it was like i could make a lot of bad noise without you know, it being so disruptive because you need the repetition to get better. So totally, totally. Yeah, and then my older brother, he's like I always just felt like a, a, a loser of a piper growing up because my older brother was so good, and oh, yeah. I I never thought to think like, oh, I'm a good piper. He's just amazing. I just thought, oh, I'm just like he's a normal piper. 
that I'm awful, right? So it's rough how often that like sibling thing happens where yeah. it's like, well, my sibling already does this thing, so I have to find something else to do. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it, 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 I don't know if that was maybe that was a bit of a factor in me getting out of pipes, but I I don't I don't think so. I think it was just like like he was just he could just like play a jig nine o like <laughs> like super fast like. Right. He he could just hear some music and then play it, or just never hear a song, see the sheet music and mm. and play it. But but he's kind of got busy with work and family and kind of out of piping. But I mean, he's someone who could just pick up a set of pipes and play 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 something really really well, regardless. I think so. So yeah, it's kind it's kind of inter- like between him and me, I I would have put all my money on him continuing <laughs> to yeah, pipe more, yeah. but. But again, it's sometimes music you take a break and get back into it. Like I probably True enough. didn't. I probably didn't play my pipes for the better part of a decade mm-hmm. for a while, and until I kind of got into it more again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you have sisters as well, or was it was it Ma, Pa, and the boys out on the cattle? Right. Ranch? Yeah. So we got a baby sister. Yeah. Uh, she's eight years younger, and she never took any interest in piping, but she was a Highland dancer, so. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. And then she she played trumpet as well, like in school bands. So, hey. So I can, I had to give her to my work. old trumpet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. So so then um like what I'm just imagining like were you all piling into the pickup truck at the end of a hard day of work on the cattle ranch with your with your pipes to drive over to town to play with the grade five band or. Was it a right. lot? Of, was yeah. it more like a family, like more time just spent at home, everybody learning, you only visit the town every once in a while, or what, how did yeah. that shake out? Yeah, so it was uh, very much, like, always kind of felt like an oddball piper growing up outside, and like learning outside of a pipe band, right? <laughs> like, cause, yeah, that's true, there's, I mean, there's a sense of this, like, well, what what band did you learn with? And it's like, if you didn't learn yeah. with a band, then like, what are you doing? Right. You know? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, and so my older brother, he didn't join a pipe band till he was in university in mm. Calgary, a little bit bigger, uh, like a bigger city. And, yeah. um, and, and yeah, so like we did all our piping just kind of on our own and, uh, in solo competitions. Um, and I always thought too, like, Oh, like, you know, if I was a real piper, I'd be with all these, you know, I'd be doing stuff with a pipe band. Um, but at the That's, same time, that, the that pipe is... band didn't really interest me that, like, it wasn't what grabbed my soul. It was when I, whenever I heard, like, a Yulian piper or, a, yeah. you know, this Celtic group at a at a beer garden in the uh, Highland Games, that, like, that would be, like, that, like, that is what turned my head off its shoulders going, like, whoa, like, I'm... I want to do that, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I want to say the word that, I want to say the word that I'm thinking of is insidious. I'm not sure if that is the best word for it, but it feels like that's the insidious thing, isn't it? That, that thing that snuck in there was, you said that if I was a real piper. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then I would be on with a pipe band, and and I'm yeah. not, I'm not like I man. Sometimes I really go too far, and then regret what I've said later because like I I really do love playing with pipe bands, and I love listening to pipe bands, and like that's that's my home base. That's where I got started, and so I love right. it. Right, and I intend to keep playing with pipe bands until I die. I'm hoping my kids will join me in a pipe band. So I'm really not yeah. saying it's it's bad. I'm just saying like there is this like pervasive sense in the community in general that like if you're serious about it you'll be competing it's like man competition can help for sure it can help drive you to improve and stuff like that and it can be mm-hmm. fun if you're into it but to make it exclusive like that even if it's not directly said that there's like this underlying sense that like well if you're not competing then you're not taking it seriously you know that yes. you're not a real bagpiper that man yeah. we, we got to get free of that that's that's no good we got every, everybody yeah. got to be able to play however they're going to play you know yeah, and I I put out some videos on on that. I can't remember if I made them public or if it was just in the my Facebook group, but like on on just that, like everybody has these soundtracks, right? Like mine's related to oh, I didn't grow up playing in a pipe band enough or mm-hmm. <laughs> and then comparing myself to my brother, but someone I was talking to another like really established, really good piper, and their soundtrack was like 
like set this soundtrack that like you know like a song stuck in your head that you can't get out right yeah, and it yeah. just whatever the self doubt story is right and their self doubt story was they didn't do enough solo piping and they mm. got pushed into a band too early and had done nothing but band stuff and no solo competition or solo gigs no in matter, their no development. matter what so we it, are, it we was the complete think. opposite of yeah. mine yet the yeah. underlying theme was all the same oh well this is why i'm not as good of a piper yeah. as i should be right so yeah. it's like oh well clearly if you know the two opposites can't be true so it's just that kind of self-doubt what is, what is, there's, a, there's a great poem that, that's something like humans are such a funny lot always wanting what they're not um, <laughs> it, it is it is such that's a feature good. of humanity though isn't it that like we, we like first of all we always we do all, there's there is this like i don't know is it part of the hedonic treadmill or something that we're always like chasing whatever we don't have it's like whatever right. we, once we get what we always wanted there's always going to be something else that comes up that we still don't have but but then there's yeah. also this comparison thing where we look at like the worst possible thing that in us and put it in the worst possible light and then we hold that up against the best possible thing about somebody else and we're very like forgiving and hold it up in the best possible light and it's just <laughs> yeah. we're not fair to ourselves <laughs> yeah exactly and, and that's like yeah so it's uh i i think it's a lot of like learning to be kind to yourself to yeah. let that inner musician grow and 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 just also like uh, the constant reorientation of like just like enjoy the journey right like enjoy oh, totally. enjoy the learning of the song the perfecting of the song and if you enjoy getting that song as ready as you can for the gig or the competition or whatever then like the result of the competition that doesn't matter right like because you you've enjoyed just the op just the getting it there so and and that wasn't really my mindset when I was competing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it's like something that's kind of brewed over time. <laughs> yeah. So so then, what? I, we we talked about your poor mother with all these pipers learning all around her. But what about the poor yeah. cows? How did they handle it? Yeah. So they 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 seem fine with it. Like yeah. So we we had a there was a local doctor in town. So town was a half hour drive away. And he had a son my age, and he played the pipes in Calgary, which is about a city two hours away. He played with, like, a, a grade three band or there. Mm -hmm. So he got us all started. And um, and then we would just kind of, like, once a week after school, we'd all sit around his kitchen table and all play. And, there we go. Um, yeah. and, then, and then we would uh, just practice on our own at home. And, and, I mean, the nice thing about growing up in the middle of nowhere on a ranch like just just do your pipes outside right <laughs> when, yeah. if it wasn't winter and and yeah the it's actually like green grassy hills lightly treed and cows all over the hills and we had some highland cows too so oh, it was, classic. yeah classic. it was always like there's some evenings before the mosquitoes got bad <laughs> that mm -hmm. is quite 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 enjoyable to pipe outside um, so the cows, the cows seemed okay with it. They got used to it, I guess. Sometimes, then, sometimes when those drones first start kicking in, it sure sounds like a cow, anyway. So yeah, exactly. Blended right yeah, in. yeah. Uh, no, there's lots of times where it's kind of picture picturesque. Yeah, so it's really, you know, compared to a lot of people I talk to who, you know, living, and eventually when I was living in an apartment too it was like oh mm. it's a lot tougher to yeah <laughs> to just like step out and play yeah yeah and then eventually we did my brother and I for probably a y couple of years anyway maybe three years but at least two years we did lessons with a professional piper in Calgary so that was like a two-hour drive mm -hmm. and we do that once or twice a month and that's kind of more well we were solo competing the whole time but that's kind of more when we got into yeah. um, more serious solo competing. O only about like three or four Highland games a year, but, but just like taking them seriously, <laughs> like, like having a good teacher or instructor or a good coach. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so then what, like you had a, you said you took about a, a decade break. When did that happen? And what was going on during that year, those 10 years? Cause like, if you weren't playing bagpipes, what on earth in the world else could you possibly have been doing? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I was thinking about playing bagpipes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> yeah, so like, uh, so probably I phased out of like solo competing, I don't know, maybe when I was 14 yeah. or so. Kind of when high, like high school sports started ramping up, like my, my brother and I would always show up to bagpipe lessons, like with our cleat marks all over our hands and yeah, our fingers yeah. taped and blood and our teachers just like what, what were you geez. playing by the way I, like oh a little bit of everything but yeah. volleyball and rugby were probably the worst oh, on gotcha. fingers yeah <laughs> there, there's there's so. like a um a gen generalization that happens in my brain that i assume that in that area of the world it must have been lacrosse like that's probably the only sport oh right yeah yeah or maybe <laughs> curling but mostly lacrosse so. yeah oh well, you have volleyball up there well good for you all right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's funny <laughs> yeah so you kind so, of turned toward the sports for a while huh yeah and I, I that's still a little bit of a mystery to me why i did that i always like part of my recent like in recent growth years, like my like these last three four years, I've kind of moved away from competition and mm-hmm. more into like, oh, I can just I can just run because I enjoy it. I don't have mm-hmm. to like have a race on the calendar to make mm-hmm. me run and then try to outcompete my training partners and you know like yeah. like I have this big competition drive that I've been having to kind of grow past and have a funner life for it, but. So I thought I got out of solo competing because I was sick of the competing part. Mm-hmm. But then I I just went crazy into sports for a while and did university sports as well and just like so the competing well that there. that that's competing so yeah. but I had a brainwave a, a while ago and I think a big part of it is community mm-hmm. is I like on all these sport teams I was usually the captain and one of the main leaders and I really have this drive to like build a community and help other people be the best they can be and stuff like that. And like, well, that when I was just kind of, that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and it kind of, with what I'm doing now with get bagpipe ready, it's really what I'm doing is trying to help others and trying to build community. And, and, and so it kind of fits a little bit with why I have that drive. I don't know, but, it, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So whereas I think the solo competing with bagpipes, it was, really it was just kind of like on my own and even if I was winning it it still wasn't kind of deeply satisfying like so I, I kind of think well if I was with a band and helping other people up and coming I, I probably would have s- stuck with it mm-hmm. more just if there's that community aspect but yeah yeah no that totally yeah. makes sense yeah I mean that resonates yeah. with me I know I know that there's certainly joy to be had from playing by yourself as well but I know that for sure like the the bigger thing that keeps me plugged into bagpiping is precisely community it resonates a lot with me it makes it yeah sense. and i i know like different people have different drives but that yeah like that seems to be like just just achieving medals like it it, it didn't last right mm-hmm. so i think the sports was um what had that community component but i mean like i played i played trumpet all through high school band as well yeah. I, I played even, trumpet in high school as well. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. yeah, you like all the the quiet instruments, like me. <laughs> that's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So even like kind of mid high school when I was kind of quitting solo piping com- competitions, I still like play for um, ceremonies or weddings or funerals like different things like that as they come up or talent shows or events in town like just I mean it's a small town and you're the bagpiper <laughs> so it's like hey can you and your brother play at this oh yeah right, sure right. so so we 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 uh, play at various things like that so that kind of kept me into it even though I wasn't competing and then in universities I played a couple pub crawls with my brother's pipe band but university was I started playing my small pipes more and more. So I, I probably got small pipes around like 14 years of age because we went to this, or maybe 13, we went to this bagpipe camp um, in Washington, I, I think Coeur d'Alene. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, and, and that yeah, was I, like... I've been to Coeur d'Alene before, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So our, our teacher, our, our like 
professional pipe teacher, she, mm -hmm. she was going down there and she said, yeah, you guys should go down. So we went down and, uh, oh, it, like it was really good and some really good pipers and instructors, but like, I really, really couldn't read sheet music. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like when people ask, oh, do you learn by ear or by sheet music? I said, well, I don't know. I'm bad at both. <laughs> right? like, <laughs> it's like, I can't just listen and play it, but I can't you know, I need the sheet music, but I can't just like look at the sheet music and play it. I need to hear it. So it's like, <laughs> so I need both, a, yeah. I need a full body integration. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was really slow learning the songs, but like there was a lot of good experience and I think that really helped my piping, but there was one instructor and he had Hamish Moore small pipes, mm. which I'd never heard of or seen before. And, and he, uh, you know, anyone who wanted to, he like, oh yeah, like, cause you're in a little group and you go around all the instructors. And so he, he let us play them and I, and he was quite impressed with how well I did. I think I just, I like, I did Scotland, the brave, something I was familiar with and I didn't have a steady tone, but he was impressed with how steady I could get right off the bat. And, mm. and we went back, I brought my, cause my mom had come down after the sessions, like in the evening, we went back and sh showed her. And I, I not at that pipe camp too, there was a Yulian Piper and a guy on keyboard just did entertainment one night. So mm -hmm. I got this exposure for the first time to small pipes and Yulian pipes. And I just, it, it just like sparked something in me that went dormant for some time. That's I, I feel like still just like germinating and, and coming, <laughs> coming to be. So yeah, so anyway, I had no money for small pipes, but I won a fishing derby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a ice fishing derby. Nice. No one, no one caught any fish, so they had to draw the name and at the end of won. the day. <laughs> and it was like minus thirty six, minus thirty eight degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it was cool freezing. Anyway. And uh, we, my mom and I, had this moose hide blanketed over us to keep us warm now, Alec, <laughs> and this is just this story is getting so more just and like more it, canadian it, it's getting go. a little bit a <laughs> little bit too canadian i can pull off yeah. we didn't we didn't break for a, a a back bacon break or a canadian bacon break no yeah right so yeah they draw the name at the end and and I won, and it was like two thousand dollars or two thousand five hundred dollars. Just so. just for persevering in the cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we yeah we used that money to buy my first set of small pipes, which is still the ones I play. So that's so cool. Yeah. So in university, it was a even though I wasn't competing or doing yeah still the odd gig or like a, a university talent show or something I would yeah. play at, but like. For the most part, I just started really playing my small pipes because I could do it in my apartment and it was fine. And and that's kind of when I got into small piping. So, yeah, so that was, even though I didn't really crack out my big Highland pipes very consistently for the better part of a decade, I was, I was doing a fair amount of small piping, but still in kind of fits and spurts. Like there was, you know, no real reason to be putting in lots of hours each week it was just like ah, oh, i don't want to study and need something to wind down so play yeah. the small pipes for a while kind of thing right right yeah that's that's probably i mean you know on the same topic of like different motivations and and piping for the reasons that fit you your you and your time of life and stuff that's that's probably a good experience that most of us should have at some point that you know at some point in our life to realize like um because because if we if i well i don't know like we were saying before, the the drive of having a competition on the calendar can be a really good impetus for improvement, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be yeah. an element of fun in there too, and and sometimes being able to sit back and relax can uh, can infuse a different kind of joy or enjoyment into the music. That and I'm not saying it's all one or the other, but maybe there's a little bit of a yin and yang relationship going on, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's kind of what I'm finding now too, like. If I have a gig on the calendar, whether it's big pipes or small pipes or both, it's like, oh, yeah, that's good to get it. Or like someone says, OK, we want you to do these three tunes. I'm like, oh, well, how about these ones? Because I already know that. No, we want these three. Oh, OK, right. now I have to learn these three. But it like that's that's still a really good for that musical growth. But mm -hmm. but then there's times where it's just like I just want to kick back and 
play this or try to write this or try to, you know, and, yeah. and just kind of see where it goes with, with no, no outer world reason other than I'm just doing it to do it. Right. So, I, so I think, yeah, having, I, I agree with the yin yang, it's kind of like you need to handle both those opposites and sometimes swing more one way, swing the other way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so then, um, how, like, I, I watch everything that comes up in my social media feeds that you post, and I, oh, yeah. I enjoy all of them. A lot of them are tunes, of course, but... I was so surprised that you were like, oh, I, I follow your channel. I was like, oh, really? Dude, I've, I think I've been following you for, like, a couple years now, too, you know, so... Yeah, that's about when I started, yeah. Yeah, but... I was, I'm like, well, you're a good pipe, like, you're not, like, like, my target audience or whatever is a... You know, the middle-aged person oh, who's yeah, always like wanted to pipe and never piped before, or they got gifted a chanter and tried it and were miserable with it, and it's sitting in a cupboard for three years. Like, like that's who I want right. to try to help, right? So when you're like, oh, I follow your stuff. Like, really? <laughs> I, yeah, was, I, I was shocked. Yeah, I definitely, like... It's not like a, I have no nefarious purposes, I promise, Alec. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> shooting for your job and trying to poach students or anything like that. I, I, I honestly just like, I, I, I like bagpipes, period, yeah. you know? And so it's like, I, I like it when I see you playing Ba Ba Black Sheep out in the mountains or something, you know? Cause I got nothing against that. I'm all for yeah. it. As, and, but I especially like that's cool. the, you put a lot of jokes into everything you do. And that's, that's some of my favorite stuff. Oh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me, like, the epitome, like, and, you know, tell me about all your bagpiping stuff, sure, but, like, how did you get to the bagpipe yoga video? Because I feel like that was... Oh, yeah, That was right. a high point, for sure. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that was, oh. That was comedic gold right there. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed the bagpipe yoga. <laughs> because the, that, was, that was a great example and there, I have other videos like this too, where I'll just get this idea, mm -hmm. and and kind of like what we're talking about the yin and yang of piping, like oh I have to be productive and prepare for this competition or gig. Like sometimes it's like I have to be productive. Someone has you know paid me to do this course on this tune, and I have to I have to create video content for this, right? Like yeah, yeah. And that's good because it gets gets consistent content out, but. But some are like these bagpipe yoga ones where no one has a clue I'm doing it. No one has asked me. I've just had this idea, and now I'm awake at two thirty thinking about it. That is the rehearsing hour it for over and over, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just like, and not in an anxious way, just in a yeah. excited way. And I'm like, okay, hey, however it works, this idea has popped out of the universe into my head, and I can say no to it. It'll go away eventually, but like I, I just have to do yes. this right yeah. like it's like I so I have to do this one so I can sleep at night and two so I can watch it and laugh at it so yep, yep. and these are usually the videos my wife like she doesn't even bother watching or anything yeah. it's, it, like it's like I'm really not trying to impress anyone I just want to sleep at night and yeah. laugh at it so so yeah to hear that oh someone else and, and and often those videos aren't the best performing videos like oh sure yeah so I, i've learned it yeah they're they're completely for me <laughs> and if yeah, someone else I'll, gets I'll, a kick I'll out of it what, bonus. There's, there's at least one other person in the world who's enjoying them yeah <laughs> <laughs> right here <laughs> but yeah so yoga i tried a little bit in university like i, I i'm very much like a recovering workaholic <laughs> so uh, yeah. in university when I was in the prime of, okay, you got to be productive to be worthwhile, I, I tried taking this rest and relaxation class that talked about yoga and mindfulness and meditation. And, and, any, and it was like lectured on all these mats. And they, I don't know if they took you through mindful breathing or something, but the very first lecture, I fell asleep. <laughs> and I didn't wake up till oh, like dear. everyone was like <laughs> leaving and someone like really elbowed really me. Needed it. <laughs> yeah, so little did I know that that's what I really needed in my life, but I took it as well, this is a waste of time and I dropped the class. <laughs> you're, and so, it wasn't, you're so yeah. burnt out and exhausted that you fell asleep <laughs> during the course and you're like, I don't need this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, well that wasn't even productive. What a waste of time. I just like my wife and I were doing a crossword just recently and it's like What's a four-letter word for take a break? And I said lazy. 
Oh. <laughs> and she said, no, Alec, it's rest. R-E-S-T. I said, oh, well, I'm lazy as four letters. This is this is the cattle ranch work ethic that you, yeah. can't, you can't get yourself away from. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So little did I know, you know, in my kind of early 30s, that would be like the breakdown point and, and the learning like, oh, okay, yeah, rest, relaxation, recovery, you know, tuning into your body. Like all these things are, are, are actually a really important part of life's rhythms. So, I, I, so yeah. I feel like I can relate to you in a lot of ways, Alec, and this is one of them that I had not <laughs> anticipated. That like my wife tells me often that I need to stop being so resentful of sleep. <laughs> right, that like it, you know. I wouldn't have noticed it about myself, but she tells me like it. She she'll tell me like it makes you angry that you have to sleep at some <laughs> point, you know. And she's like, sleep is your friend, you know. It, it'll make your waking right. hours better. You just need to sleep. <laughs> and uh, and I have honestly just like really recently in the last few weeks, like like really rec- in the last couple of months, I've got um, like ADHD medication that I'm trying out and stuff like that. Okay, which yeah. maybe I don't know if that's having some effect or not. Like. I don't know if this is a common experience for people, but like I'm like, this is doing nothing at all. This is pointless. And then my right. wife and kids are all like, you have been so much better lately. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm doing it because I trust them and believe them. But but um, but I, just in the last little while, I've been like, all right, I'll try to get like, I don't know, six and a half or seven hours, like four or five times a week. Right. And I am begrudgingly admitting that like, okay, that maybe actually is making my life a little better. Yeah. So I'm I'm beginning to accept it, but I still have a little bit of resentment in me for the, just that we even have to sleep ever. Like, what a stupid thing. Why are we designed this way? Like, right, yeah, why, yeah. Why, why can't oh, I just that's... go into, like, like an elvish low-power mode and go for a walk with, <laughs> and, and think about stuff while I'm sleeping, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, and and that's kind of, like, with me, too. It's, like, I used to pride myself. Oh, yeah, four or five hours. I can mm-hmm. And I can get twice as much done as all these other right. so-called humans, right? <laughs> like, yeah. you know? And it's yeah. like, and, and little did I, oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I need, I need seven and a half, eight hours. And, you know, and yeah. it's like, oh, life changes when I get up to that. But, uh, but then still, like, the stress response is still there. Like, so if things, whether it's lots of music gigs or, like, work stuff, family stuff, like, whatever, if, if there's lots on the go, then the tendency is, still to work late and not sleep and not do yoga and not do meditation not do all the things that I know is helpful like so it's a lot of like remembering to oh yeah I gotta shift gears so so yeah the yoga is kind of a a new thing and with COVID I'd, I I I hate having to look up stuff on my phone mm. <laughs> so like I have a pretty good anger <laughs> response too <laughs> or irritation <laughs> response so so what I this yoga routine I found and I liked it, so I just ended up memorizing it. And I've been doing the same yoga routine. Sometimes I'll vary it up a little bit just with my own ideas. But for the most part, I've been doing the same yoga routine since the start of COVID. Mm. And it's great. Then I don't have to look it up on my phone and that. And and it's just like, I don't know, just my my humor brain. Like... In university, my roommate and I did a few spoof videos and stuff. Like, it just, I don't know, just that that yoga idea came in. You can't help yourself. Yeah, like, it is just like, oh, it's just perfect, you know? Mm. Like, instead of saying namaste, say amazing grace. It's <laughs> <So laughs> just, just, just like, it's just like, oh, this is... This is just too good. That's I'm like, well, that's... maybe I'm offending the yoga people and all the big yeah, people, now you're and I'll lose, I'll movies. lose my following, and like, but I'm like, well, I, whatever. If that happens, it happens. I just, I have to do this. <laughs> but, but that's that's that's. I think that that's part of the magic of it, and I know that, like, of course, like the worst possible thing you can do to a joke is explain it, right? Break it apart into yeah. its <laughs> elements and figure out why is this funny, you know? But I, yeah, I, I also kind of like doing that, and it, it does. I feel like in general, there's a generally applicable rule in comedy that like whatever you're doing has to have a level of actual, um, like you have to actually know what you're doing to some degree. You have to, if you possess some of the like real uh, vocabulary for the 
the joke you're making, <laughs> then it makes the joke that much better, you know? Right, yeah. And, like, like as a viewer of the joke, even if the viewer or listener, the, the person receiving the joke, even if they don't also possess that specialized vocabulary, if you use it, it makes the joke better for everyone. And so uh, I think that's part absolutely. of why that one works so well is that you know bagpiping and you also know yoga at least enough to be dangerous, as they would say, right? You yeah, at least know yeah. The, at least enough to, to be able to make some of those little jokes that... <laughs> Those yeah. are really where the the spice of it is, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it, I, and it's like, yeah, it's just funny, right? Like, and it's not just like the bagpipe yoga it can be, you know, like playing Adam's family on the bagpipes or what? Like, yeah, we're sure. as humans, we want to draw those borders on the globe. We want to say, no, this is bagpiping. This is not bagpiping music. You know, we want this is yoga. No, this is this is athlete, this is musician, like, we want to, and I think sometimes comedy, like, this bagpipe yoga video, it's just, like, we just mess with our heads a little bit to be, like, we, we blur the lines or combine those two worlds, or, like, we think things are so opposite, and then we stack them on one another in such a hilarious way that, like, yeah, you, you know, like, I don't know, it's just, but I know what you mean, and, and my real goal was if some poor soul comes across this video in their feed who's not a bagpiper or yoga person mm. it, they'll have this double take and is is this a thing i, I miss, I miss this yoga, like <laughs> is this real so like the whole video i'm like i'm deadly serious or That's try to be i probably component. laugh at yeah, some point but it like seriously. it's i like what i really want is like people wait wait a minute is this a, like like sometimes like monty python or that British humor, it's yeah. like, you just have this, wait, is this, did the joke start yet? Is this the, yeah. Yeah. If it's well so. done, you can, um, I mean, I mean, how many of us, if we, if we, if we're serious, if we're honest about it, how many of us, when we first heard of goat yoga years ago, thought it was a joke at first and then it turned out it was a real right. thing, you know? Yeah. Like, like in Saskatchewan, we always drive by this sign goat yoga and I always thought like, what the heck? And, oh, it's a thing. It oh, really is a thing. <laughs> Yeah, but it, yeah, it took me like four or five years to to realize that. <laughs> yeah. So so then so then what yeah. about what about your the people who are around you now? Like, I mean, you're married. Is is your partner okay with bagpipes, or is this like a hurdle that you have to get over? You know. Yeah. Right. No. So um, actually, she was. I met her probably when I wasn't doing much bagpiping actually so you kind of tricked her then but well like she found somehow in conversation so we we met at a different province so like two province or like two states over the only <laughs> so time Canadian. we've been two provinces yeah, over <laughs> the, <laughs> the only time we'd been to that area of the country either of us well that's the other thing too right like two yeah. provinces over like let's be clear provinces are massive that's like a ways, yeah so it, a ways it'd away. be like yeah like six states over <laughs> But yeah, we went for my brother's wedding, and it was her best friend, or one of her friends, and my brother, so we were oh, both in the wedding party. Yeah, we were both doing university at opposite ends of Canada, and we met, and we danced, and we visited, and she loved that I was a bagpiper. Like, oh, cool, I gotta start playing my pipes again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no. And anyway, so we did the long distance relationship for a while before we we got got both in one place and got married and that's fun that that means that when you're hanging out with your brother your wife gets to see your her friend as well yeah they they live quite far away but but yeah like in in theory right (laughs) whenever that might happen in the future yeah (laughs) yeah exactly so she and she herself plays clarinet and fiddle Mm -hmm. so before we had kids we both played in a symphony for a few years I played trumpet and she played clarinet, so that so we did music together. And then oh, I think did yeah. you do a Christmas video with her on violin? Yeah, once? yeah. So she's yeah. on. Yeah, she's playing the the violin or the mm-hmm. fiddle there, and um, so and she's been like I never thought myself as a musician. Mm-hmm. I think maybe always because a bit of a struggle to read sheet music and learn new songs and often with a new song, like your anger <laughs> with sleep, I just, I just will hate that song. Sometimes a song, it's like I knew it in a different lifetime or something. It's just like, oh, I just love this song. I can't, mm-hmm. I just want to persevere and learn it. But sometimes like, like Danny Boy's one, like 
I've always resisted learning Danny Boy. I've never liked this song. And then I had to learn it. All of a sudden, someone asked for a yeah, workshop that's, on that's it on the come pipes. Up for sure, is a request. There was a, a couple Irish gigs we're doing with a different group that I had to learn how to sing it. And then I had to learn how to play on the whistle. Like, I, all of a sudden, the universe was like, you're learning this song. And, mm-hmm. I, and I was quite unimpressed and didn't like the song, irritated with it. But, you know, the more I listen to it, it's like it has to sink into my bones. Mm. And then I can't stop playing it because I love it so much. Mm. Like, like, it's like I resist it coming in, but once it gets deep enough, then... It never leaves then I, again. <laughs> yeah, then I just love it. So, yeah. so it's like that initial resistance I have, like, Oh, I, I don't think of myself as a musician, but my wife very much thinks of myself as a musician. And, mm. and you know, and like, so she's always like two or three steps ahead of me when I'm like, oh, Laura, like, she tells me about this Celtic jam in Lethbridge, the small city about an hour, 15 minutes away from us. And I'm like, she's like, yeah, like, you should go. And I'm like, oh, no, I'd never do something like that. Like, I haven't. Mm. played my small pipes in front of people like ever or like you know and it's like mm-hmm. and then a few days later it's like ah oh, laura i actually i really want to try going to that celtic jam <laughs> yeah. and she's like yeah i know i already booked a hotel and we'll go as a family i'm like oh okay uh, <laughs> and then yeah, and then yeah. and then there's a few people there who have a band and if i end up playing a couple of gigs with them before they officially invited me into the band and and i was like, laura you wouldn't believe it John invited me into the band and they want me and she's like yeah I know I knew that the first <laughs> night we went like and she I was like how do you know and she shows me a picture of him looking at me playing grinning away and she's like yeah I I took a picture because I knew <laughs> so <laughs> she knew that was gonna be the, the beginning yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, just recently as I'm talking more about like Laura I think I need to get like because I've been singing in a choir a bit um for the last year just with our local church and Mm -hmm. I'm like look I think I like I've seen some progression I can actually hear a little bit if I'm on pitch or not that it's like I just have opened that door a crack what I really need is like to work with somebody and she's like yeah I know you need voice coaching right Mm -hmm. and I was like yeah exactly (laughs) like that's exactly (laughs) what I was trying to say so she's like yeah of course like so so she's been supportive like I think, you know, some spouses might be like, well, why would you waste money on voice lessons when, you know, right, right. it's not going to help our income or, or whatever. But she's, yeah, she's very, she's been helping support me and before I even know I need the support. So I'm yeah, it very, sounds like she, she very lucky your, that way. Uh, she has your best interests at heart and knows you really well, maybe better than you know yourself. And isn't yeah. that a lovely definition for a marriage relationship? <laughs> yeah, Somebody exactly. who knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah, and I think, like, for both of us, we, we bring out the quiet parts of each other that mm. that is wanting to come out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. for me, it's the musician side, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas for her, it's, you know, it might be other other pieces, so... I'm yeah. assuming that it's got to be something like like wildly different. Like you're like encouraging her to take up roller derby or something. Like <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> totally on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you want to you want to start a gladiator ring. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> I, I already booked you some lessons with a martial artist. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So so then so yeah. how does the how did the get bagpipe ready thing get started like as a like as a business oh, venture? Yeah, so it, it started. We're 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 about an hour yeah. deep, so like let's let's go ahead and like start like start okay. talking about like your your big thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I almost think some of this this other stuff might be more interesting to your well, audience. That, that's that, that's kind of I'm my joke, because d- honestly, I think the other stuff is what I love anyway. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, well, and that's, if there's a topic, like, let's get to it, I guess, you know, if yeah. we have to. <laughs> but I guess even, like, even if someone is not a beginner piper, I think kind of my origin story with Get Big Pipe Ready is, is helpful, because it's all about, it's not a direct path, and it's all about learning by failure, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so many people think, oh, I have to learn this song or embellishment or whatever, perfect the first time. And it's like, no, you have to learn by making a mess of it over and over. Right? Like, yeah. that's how it gets perfect is right. my theory. So I guess the really the start of it was I was burnt out as a physio. Um, so I like a physical therapist. 
is my yeah. I saw some of my your, job. Yeah, you, you've got some medical therapy uh, or medical humor out there on the internet as well. Oh right? yeah, and I did wonder like, <laughs> is this guy a legit doctor? Like, where's this coming from? Because it seems like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so as a phys- physiotherapist or physical therapist, uh, and uh, is that a Canadian American thing? Do we say physical therapy here? Yeah, you guys say physiotherapy. Yeah, we say physiotherapy because that's what the Brits say. This is um, like. Do you also say maths? Like, maths, like mathematics. Do you say maths in school when you're studying maths, or do you say math? Like you're going. We to just math say level? math. Oh, okay. So that's that's very American of you. But the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's funny because some Canada, things. What a yeah, strange land. I I know it's some mysterious. some yeah some things we take the British thing and some things we take the American. And thing. of course, this is so unfair because basically Canada can't have anything that's its own. Everything yeah. that you do must be either British or American. It can't be. Yeah, it can't be the Canadian way. Yeah, and then within that, like, oh, I don't know if I can quite think of an example, but like, it's funny. Like, like people like my grandpa really ingrained like certain words that are well this is like humor mm. is spelt with o-u like he'd written no oh, this is sure. how we spell humor we're yeah. part of the british crown you know like yeah. whereas like well like everyone else in canada spells it the american way yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. like so so it's like it's like just you can have little funny differences like that mm. as well <laughs> yeah so yeah so it, it started as burnt out as a physio yeah so my number one solution is, well, I have to try harder as a physio. <laughs> so that that sounds, of, <laughs> sounds true to, to personality, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sleep with the less, productive, try harder. <laughs> yeah, with the productive <laughs> mindset and workaholic. Right. So, so instead of just working full-time and being tired of being a physio, I, I worked uh, my own business in the evening as well as working full-time for the health system. Mm. So, so I just tried more, and that didn't work. Um, you know, at all. So then I actually dropped a day a week. I went down to working four days a week and I quit my private business, um, seeing clients on my own. And then I, uh, went into partnership with another physio and we tried to create an online business Mm -hmm. and we, and gosh, I think it was about two years of trying different things, losing money at everything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like we tried to create uh, app that uh, that would help physios do assessments, and and that ended up flopping. We tried creating an app that would help um, us assess runners online to help them with their injuries, and create a whole thing helping runners online, and that ended up flopping. And then we uh, we did a then COVID came, and so then we <laughs> did this whole thing online to help. Physios learn how to do tele rehab assessments with COVID, and and that ended up flopping. Man. And then we we ended up teaching like just doing a coaching program with physios and and postgraduate courses online with physios, and and that actually made some money. But the problem is like the more money we made, the more money we spent to get people to like you know like we'd have to spend so much money to get people to watch our free webinar right, to then sign totally. up for our course. It was always like we, we were still losing money at the end of the day. So, right. so that was two years of tons of work. And, and I worked more hours doing that than the day I had dropped from, from the clinic and, you know, doing in-person physio. So, right. so again, it, it was not where it was doing more of what I was burnt out doing. And it, we were in Saskatchewan at my wife's parents, and I woke up in the middle of the night. Again, sometimes those ideas, right, that you just, like, I just have to do this. Like, so for the past couple of years, I'd been learning banjo, a five-string banjo online. Yeah. And I'd found some real awesome people on YouTube teaching banjo. And I'd found some really awful videos, too, that maybe would be helpful to an intermediate, but as a complete beginner, never doing a string instrument before, like mm-hmm. other than a bit of mandolin, like it was like I, I needed certain things and videos to help me move forward. Mm, and I, I, just woke, I just woke up in the middle of the night and being in Saskatchewan was good. Like no internet <laughs> at my wife's family's place. Yeah. Like, so like no internet, I guess there is cell phone, but 
it uses up data. So it's like, so basically I was completely unplugged for a week from, from being in this workaholic online business. That I was, was going to say, sounds losing like a money for two nightmare. years. You're probably going crazy for a couple of days. Yeah. It, it definitely going through some withdrawals and, uh, but yeah. So woke up in the night and I just had this brain and I just like wrote out in my journal two pages and called it get bagpipe ready two pages of this business plan or business model Mm -hmm. incorporating like all these things i've been trying and learning with andrew my business partner that you know and i really got along with him that's why if i didn't get along with him i probably would pulled out sooner but yeah i got along with him i wanted it so badly to work but it just nothing was working but like i was like i think a lot of these ideas could you know, like the idea of like pointing out free content and, and looking to help people and right. creating a Facebook group and creating these connections and like this this whole thing. And and also I was like, you know, I'm not an awesome bagpipe player. I haven't played consistently for like eight, ten years. And, mm-hmm. you know, even my, my competing, I got up to grade three, which, which isn't awesome. It's kind of average. I was winning, like I won medals you know, all the way from Western Canada right right out to the Maritimes, I won medals at grade three. But then af- after that, I never did grade two because that was when I kind of transitioned out more into sports. But, mm-hmm. it, you know, like, you know, someone who's never heard bagpipes hears me, they're like, wow, you're awesome. But it's like, yeah, like, you know, like if someone oh, who's I... in grade one hears me, and right. it's like when, when I ran track in university, wow, Alec, you're so fast. It's like, yeah, I'm... I'm the slowest one in in the team, right? That, that, like, that's totally you know? the thing, right? If you're but if like, you're a bagpiper, you you <laughs> of course listen to bagpipers, and you know, like yeah. all of us know that none of us is good, right? <laughs> right, yeah. So, but but I learned a like despite despite losing lots of money <laughs> with Andrew, I learned so many things. Like he had like one great analogy he liked to use is. You know, if you're on the beach and someone is drowning, you know, are you going to not save them and look around and say, oh, I think there's better swimmers here than me, you know, or (laughs) no one else is here, but I know I'm not the best swimmer, so I'm not going to, you know, call for help or offer help or do anything, right? So it was kind of like that moment where it's like, you know, and to carry on something good, like here's this guy putting out banjo videos. Mm -hmm. I'm now playing banjos with my, my wife grew up fiddle uh bluegrass so bluegrass mm-hmm. fiddle music which i'd kind of tried a little bit with my bull run and irish whistles to to come in on but and her dad's a banjo player but uh it was just kind of like ah, oh, i still can't quite convince her to do celtic music <laughs> mm-hmm. uh so i was like okay I'll, I'll take the first step so i towards her music so learning banjo was a way i could play with her um it's interesting we, to me too that like being right in the middle of learning a new instrument yourself probably put you in the yes. right headspace to make good content for people who are learning bagpipes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So it was like I wanted to carry for like the goodness people were giving me from their YouTube content right. and helping me actually and I was like this is actually possible. Like it, about a year and a half into it I took a few lessons online with with a with a pro like someone who's really good but for a year and a half all I did was YouTube and I was learning the thing I could play with my wife and and her dad doing some bluegrass songs like it was like mm-hmm. wow this is possible and I just so appreciative of this content I've gotten and yeah it it put me very much in that beginner's mind and being like hey I like I'm not the best bagpiper but I can teach someone how to do a scale or a doubling or a basic song or whatever. And and I'm like, and from the banjo, like, it's like, okay, I know what videos I hate. I know what videos are too advanced for me. I know what ones are just right. And then I kind of like, like just got this idea. And then I, like, I took a quick look at kind of what kind of piping content was out there. And, and uh, mostly what I saw was videos that were like, 10 years old, you know, from the best camera at the time, which was awful and awful right, audio right. and, and somebody just be like kind of droning on mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to steal your name. Like yeah. it wasn't like, I'm like, Oh, like I know that person has some personality. They're just not letting it show. You know? 
<laughs> so that was a big motivator is like just getting in front of the screen and, and not being someone outrageous who I'm not, but just like, yeah, get in front of the screen and be be myself and make it feel like you're talking to Alec and in the at his kitchen table and taking a lesson and goofing off a little bit and so right. it was it was n- not like you know listening to to an audio book by Siri or something right, right <laughs> totally. just like yeah so so that's it it really started by failing at all those other online businesses and yet i i wasn't on facebook before doing these physio online businesses so i learned about facebook i learned how to create a facebook community I learned how to create a YouTube video and YouTube channel. I learned how to create an email list. I learned how to, like, all these things that I had no, like, I'm very much not a technical online person. So I learned all these tools that mm. didn't help in the physio business world, but, uh, like, have been really extremely helpful in in the bagpiping. That is really so, interesting. yeah. And and I, I do I, I love that it's like I love that the uh, the whole thing is like you wouldn't have seen these connections until they had already happened, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what's really funny is like I don't know if anyone's listening and they look up my channel and they think, Oh well it's 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 doing really it, it's doing quite well or whatever. Like, but it didn't start out that way because mm. I put up these two first videos. Like, as soon as we got back from the Saskatchewan trip, like, and of course, it was that night after the kids were in bed and I was up late, not sleeping. Not sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I was stressed out about my real online business losing yeah. money every month. So I put up these two, these two videos and I was so excited and so pumped about them. And I think that was like in October. Yeah, it was after we went out for Thanksgiving. So it was in October, I put up these two videos, so excited, mm-hmm. and nothing, no, nobody watched them. They didn't get any views, like nothing, like yeah. like not even like two views or any, like nothing. And I was like, oh. And then, of course, I was back plugged in online. So I kind of just, it just went to the wayside. I thought, oh, that's another one, those like ADD ideas or whatever. Right. And like, okay. And and I started working hard with the physio business again. And then, like, six weeks later, like, get an email notification. Someone has commented on your video. I'm so excited. Yeah. That first and I go there so and, like, oh, and they even left a link. How amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Click on it. Oh, and it's, a, like, a link to, like, a porno website or a dating website. or yeah. something. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> that is. So then it, I just got... got got that same sort of th- same sort of comment every few weeks for a yeah. while yeah and then and then uh i I'd, I'd come across uh again because i was working on this other online business and reading stuff and like i'd come across this idea of like just doing this mini experiment like just like you don't know if it's going to work just pick a timeline pick a task and do it and see and right. rather than you you do it once and it doesn't work, but it just wasn't enough time kind of thing. So, right. so I was like, okay, for the month of March, so this was already October to March, I hadn't done any bagpipe ready stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, for the month of March, I'm going to try experiment. I'm going to put a, you know, I'm going to put one, I, I think it was two videos out every week for the month of March. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was doing two different channels. I was doing my get bagpipe ready one, te- like teaching bagpipe stuff. And then my other channel was my own personal YouTube channel, whereas, and I thought this was the golden ticket idea. I was uh, just filming myself do banjo each week, and then people can see how much better I am week by week. Mm-hmm. And and I knew that was the idea that was going to going to really really, really take, take off. off. <laughs> and I was just doing the bagpipe one just because it's like, well, as an exercise. I, uh, yeah, it's I, I'm following this mini experiment idea, and it's like, okay, whatever. But but what happened was the complete opposite. Nobody watched any of my banjo stuff, yeah. and then all of a sudden, my yeah, just a little bit of consistent content, whether it got me in the YouTube algorithm. All of a sudden, I had like eight subscribers, like twenty three subscribers, and I had real people commenting and being like right. wow this really helped or hey i have a chanter somewhere in my basement i'm gonna look and find it or like or hey can you do this song or like it was like and it was really 
interesting how motivating it was to talk to real people about that. Mm. So, so then that was that was the start of my consistent content making, and really ever since then, then I've been like, you know, putting in consistent time on it, and yeah, your, and then your eventually, YouTube channel is, currently is clocking close to four hundred thousand views altogether. Yeah, <laughs> how does that feel? That's got to feel a little weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite crazy. Like yeah. if you if you got all the the bagpipers in a room <laughs> who right, are yeah. learning every like that would be a lot of noise. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so it, it's it's really it's really cool, really quite mm -hmm. amazing. But like it's it's also it's so much better of a fit. Like that analogy of. You know, if a flower is not doing well, just put it in its right environment and then it'll blossom more. Like, mm. you know, like me compared to doing the online physio stuff compared to the bagpiping stuff. Like, you know, like this is more about building the community. It's helping grow that musician part of me, which for whatever reason seems to want to come out. Like, it, it's just, it's a lot less live sessions and more pre recorded stuff, which mm -hmm. fits, you know, being a busy dad and and still like so it just like it just is it's just such a better fit and better like more sustainable for me for sure yeah. so it's 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 good both ways yeah yeah for sure so so then if if anybody listening is interested and and like i guess to well just basically like how how does it how does it work because what i see is of course your social media feed stuff and your youtube stuff yeah but then you've got a website if if someone were to join the you know the get bagpipe ready um like via the website, then do they get access to other videos? Like, on a, do you have like a private YouTube channel, or is it straight from the website? Right. Or is it downloads, or or how does that all work? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, and a lot of these ideas have happened on the way. Like, I didn't have sure, it yeah. quite all this planned out, but yeah, basically, there's like free YouTube content, um, and then from there, like, so a lot of some 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 tunes I do all the lessons free, mm -hmm. but but probably most of them I do the first three free. So like first three lessons on a tune are free, and my goal is I've given you enough of the tune that if you really can't afford to pay for the membership, you can kind of limp along through the rest of it, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, gotcha. And and also you you've gotten. To try out the tune, see if you like it or not, and if you want to pay for it or not. But, uh, but really, if like someone has done those first three lessons, they love it. Yeah, there's a link they can click on, and then they can just buy that single. Like Danny Boy is the one I just put out, so like they can buy that Danny Boy workshop and have mm. lifetime access to it. Um, unless I die and quit pay paying my <laughs> website fees. Uh, but uh, or they can join the membership where they get access to all the tune workshops I have. Gotcha. And and I put partly to control my um, workaholicism. I do a one new tune workshop every month. Mm -hmm. Like because when I first started, I'm excited, and I'm like you know pumping out all these tunes and and just like not sleeping. Right. So it's Same like okay, I do once a month. <laughs> so I don't do more than once a month. It yeah. keeps me in check. And and then it's also it, it it's kind of also keeps me accountable for some steady growth. So then any, yeah. anyone who's in that monthly membership, they get ongoing access to all, and plus they know they're getting a new one next next month kind right. of thing. So how and many then, do, have you found like an average like number of sessions? Like how many videos are usually the total amount of videos it takes to get a person to a tune to you know all the way through a tune, or is that very different? Yeah, for each right. Tune? Kind of, like, some tunes just have a ton of repetition. Yeah. So I find those ones usually seven videos mm. sometimes. But then I'd say quite, quite, I'd say most common is eight videos. Mm -hmm. And then some of them are just, there's just, like, less repetition or just a little bit longer tunes. So yeah. sometimes there is, like, 12 lessons. But, mm -hmm. but I find, yeah, usually eight is probably the most common for for how I do it. Yeah, gotcha. And, yeah. and is that usually from chanter up onto pipes or is it uh, all chanter work or Yeah, so those ones are all chanter work. So mm -hmm. it's just like learn the tune on the chanter. And then I I do do some 
I call it bagpipe coaching. I can't help it, Alec. I, I can't help it. I don't know if it's a tick or what, but you just said doo-doo. I have to point it out. Oh. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did say doo-doo. And, <laughs> and, I, and I do do some. <laughs> doo-doo. Sorry, that's my, it, we're le- that's my inner child. I'm just being we're, we're reading a lot of Captain Underpants and Dogman dude, right now. I don't know dude. if you've seen those, but oh, I have there's I, a lot of doo doo in those. Are you kidding? <laughs> have I seen those? My 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 longboard that's sitting next to me right here has Captain Underpants stickers all over the bottom. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah not not joking. Now. I was because we started at seven thirty, and I. At seven fifteen, I was reading Captain Underpants to my two boys, and I was like, "Oh, it's seven fifteen! I gotta get, I gotta get down to the computer." <laughs> so yeah, the doo doo is is coming out. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry to throw you off with the with the doo doo reference there. But <laughs> I, I'm okay. also not sorry because I feel like it needs to be pointed out whenever it can. Yeah, be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, so as I was saying, I I do do <laughs> bagpipe coaching. So uh, for a long time, because I did so many, so much live sessions with um, like the physio business, like we we pay for all this advertising and get all these people watching our live webinars. So we'd have like a hundred people watching a live webinar, mm-hmm. and then the kids would just be going crazy and uh. someone's sick, and my wife needs me to do this because the kids are like. And meanwhile, it's like I'm live, right? Like right. video and yeah. on and. There was just so many stressful situations. I so my initial plan with the bagpiping was only pre-recorded, nothing live. It's right. too much of a headache, and so that's why I came up with this bagpipe coaching, which some people have really loved because different time zones or their schedules are crazy. So basically, unlimited. They send me a video, and within two days, I send them a video. So oh, it's kind of yeah. like online lessons, but nothing's live. So. so then everybody can make it work with whatever their schedule is. Yeah, so that's, and I found that's a cool idea. Th- that was particularly helpful. Like where my tune workshops are all chanter, just like learn this tune on the chanter. Yeah, the bagpiping live or the bagpipe coaching was really helpful for people transitioning from the chanter to the pipes. Because mm. a lot of it is, and and I do a video demonstration like this is what you're doing, this is what you need to do, or or hey, this is where you're at. Try this as a technique exercise, and then they can show it to me. And and that was also before I was really good at getting Zoom settings. Mm. So anytime I tried a live session lesson with someone, like they'd play their chanter, and <laughs> and it would just Zoom Zoom would mute it out. It shuts it out. Yeah, and it's, it's like oh. I, that's sounding better. Yeah. Can you lift up where I can see your fingers? <laughs> right, yeah. Do it again. Like, yeah. So eventually I got better at the settings with Zoom. But yeah, so, so I do that bagpipe coaching, which is mostly on the pipes. Not not too many people do chanter work with that. And yeah. then I, I did eventually get into doing more live lessons as well. Like, mm-hmm. again, not something I necessarily advertise, but people just seem interested in asking it. So yeah but and that's a lot on the pipes but a funny story there so i debated for like months if i should put live lessons on my website like oh here i do live lessons email me if you're interested kind of thing and because i didn't want this huge influx of live lesson people so oh i don't know what okay finally okay i'm putting it on the website after losing sleep for many nights i decided to do it yeah and no change i got no new students for like eight months (laughs) Like and I, here I thought, oh, it's gonna change It'd my life. I don't influx, yeah. talk about talk about it with Laura first, my wife, and like, and then there was nothing. And then for whatever reason, eight months later, it was like ten new students all at once. Like, yeah, mm. we, I'm like, whoa, like, where did that? So the, you, by, you by can't the predict the things. About yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like you can't predict the what kind of outside effects things. You can only predict what you put out, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like same with playing for a gig you per- can't predict how it's going to go or a competition you you can only you you can control how often you practice you can control what speed you play what tune you choose you you know you, you don't know how people are going to take it so right. don't waste yeah. energy worrying about that <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah so so is is that present is bagpiping is get bagpipe ready is that your is that your all-in full-time thing or do you still do a little physio work on the side yeah, so I still, I did end up going down to three days a week with physio. Mm-hmm. Um, before I really started the bagpiping stuff, it was just, um, 
Oh, I think so. When I completely pulled out of business physio online business with Andrew, I mm-hmm. kind of like you know you hit these different rock bottoms. Yeah. So that was another rock bottom where um, it's like I have to make some changes. So I quit that business. I quit another day a week. So I went down to three days a week uh, mm-hmm. with physio, and it wasn't because I was really doing get big pack ready or making any money that way but it was just like i i just know i need to create some more space and time and and get a little bit more away from physio so Mm -hmm. um but needless to say like yeah like um about a quarter of my income right now three quarters comes from physio and a a quarter of my income right now actually comes from the get bagpipe ready so yeah so like that's that's pretty significant yeah that's absolutely yeah so that's and again, that's not really something I quite expected. I was just like, especially initially, this whole business model was more like less about making money and more about like, hey, like I can line up all these dots. Like, right. I don't, I'm not an expert piper, but I know what's a good YouTube video for a learner. And I know what I like when I'm learning. And I know like basic piping. Like, so, I and feel, I think I, mean, I yeah. It feels like that's an important distinction to make, and I know that it, it. I've heard people mention it before, and so I know that it's like a known thing. But I just like, and and in no way am I it, like judging your piping, Alec. Of course, right? But like, I, I experienced the same thing. Where like, of course, I listen to and watch amazing bagpipers, and so yeah, <laughs> I'm very aware that I'm not an amazing bagpiper. And it's like there's, but there's a separate skill set which is the ability to teach. You know, and that's. Right, it, it doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with actually being yeah. the best on the thing you're teaching. You know, yeah. sometimes the people yeah. who are really good bagpipers are terrible <laughs> teachers. You know, and the other thing can exactly. Well, so, yeah, and, and I got a funny story about an NHL hockey player about that. Mm. But uh, but I, but first, I will say I think you are an amazing bagpiper. Oh well, shucks. God. Well, I yeah. think you're an amazing bagpiper. Yeah, Alex, so take but, that. But that goes back to what we we're saying before, right? Where like. Especially initially when I started this, I wasn't as into piping again. And like, I think I was really underestimating myself as a piper, right? Mm -hmm. And that self-doubt track coming in. And whereas like, yeah, like anytime I've seen, like long before I knew who you were and knew all the different hats you wear are the same person. (laughs) (laughs) I like anytime I saw your social media stuff. I was just wow, this guy's an amazing bagpiper. Oh, and he's just like in the backyard going away. So it's it's like I like and it's funny because when we're playing we worry if there's other bagpipers in the crowd. Yes, that's what like, we're most worried about. Yeah, sure, like because yeah. <laughs> I mean face it, guitar players, piano players have it tougher than us. Everyone knows if they make that's a mess true. of things, but yeah. No one knows if we make if we make a mess of things or Except play the wrong note that, that or one in three thousand or whatever yeah. that, that might be there in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Skip the whole third part or you know right, exactly. play a different tune completely and yep. miss all the gra- the uh, grips or whatever. No yeah. one knows. Like, but yeah, so we worry about the other bagpiper in the crowd. But yeah, yeah. like when I hear any other bagpiper, I'm always just like. You know, I judge myself more harshly. Like any time I see your content, oh, that guy's amazing. <laughs> was, that's why I was like, when you said you followed me, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> you're all, you're an amazing big piper. How did you even find me? You know, <laughs> like. So, well, yeah. thanks. Little little ego boost for me for the weekend. Yeah, there that. you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you ha- you have my email if you need another one. At yeah, time. yeah, <laughs> deal stand- a standing agreement anytime. I yeah, just needs a little boost to the ego. Yeah, <laughs> pat each other on the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but yeah, the so I in my undergrad, I did it in we call it kinesiology, a bachelor of science in kinesiology or like physical education kind of might be in the states physical education or pedagogy or i don't know huh. what what is, it go yeah, by what's, what's is kinesis is that like kinetic is that it is it like yeah kind of like movement of kinetic space yeah like physical movement education so mm. a lot of some some sciences but a lot of like i did a lot of coaching courses yeah, okay. and like the the professor would be an international coach mm. and and then he'd teach you about coaching so i did do a lot of classes learning about teaching and coaching and I just have that drive to build community and help other people so it's kind of 
teaching education is kind of a good a good fit. So, but he yeah. had this funny story about uh, he was running a kids hockey camp, and they had this NHL uh, hockey player come in this, and he didn't disclose who it was because, of course, sure, in Canada sure. everyone would know who it was. Like, you know, yeah. So he didn't disclose yeah. who it was, but this this like. You know, all the parents had to fundraise to get enough money to pay for this NHL hockey player to come in yeah. to be a part of the camp to attract more kids and stuff. And, it, like, it's it's a, you know, it's a big thing. Yeah. And this NHL hockey player, like, so Brad, he's the he's my prof, and he's the guy helping run this camp. And he's like, okay, yeah, so, so-and-so so here from the NHL, he's going to teach us how to, you know, do a slap shot and wrist shot and okay, so take it away. And the hockey player is just like, yep, here you go. And he just like fires it in the net. And he's like, okay, great. Can you explain us how to do that? Like, what's our first step? What, you know, what do we do? And what, and he's like, yep, here's the puck. And, and you just hit it in and he just like hits it again. And it's like, <laughs> yep, that's all he had. <laughs> was like, <laughs> outside of visual demonstration, there was, there was like, it, and, and uh, Brad said he's just like standing there, all the kids waiting and watching, and the the hockey player's just standing there, and he, he's got nothing. And Brad's like, okay, and just from then on, he had to just like fake the rest of the camp, and they oh, basically man. paid all this big money for the expert. And so that's, that's rough. Yeah, so that kind of goes like someone might be a way better piper than me, but can't teach or just. They have an awesome personality. They're a great teacher, mm-hmm. but they get in front of a camera and they just kind of freeze, right? Yeah, like, totally. It, it, it sucks their personality out. Whereas I've been working two years in this failing business to show personality in front of a camera <laughs> right, and computer yeah. screen. So it was like, it was like, you know, it was kind of like paying tuition. <laughs> you, know, do you, you, don't, like you don't make money in school, but eventually you get a job done. Like right. Do you, do you think that sometimes like the desperation of trying to get that business model to work drove you to like really show a lot of personality? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think I went through those phases where by the time I got to Bagpipe Ready, it was like I'd already been doing this for yeah. two or three years now. Right. And I'd already gone through the trying to be extra charismatic, trying to you know, tell this story to like really reach the, like the, the, the trigger point of this yeah. audience. And like, like I'd, I'd done all this stuff. And by the time I got to get big, by really, it's just like, Oh, I can just, I can just be myself and let, let things happen that are going to happen. You know? That's kind of perfect though. Cause it's like, it's like you pushed, the, you, you had to push the limits. Like you pushed stuff maybe. And like, and I'm, I'm imagining here, I didn't see any of your physio videos, of course. Right. But I'm imagining like you might've pushed some things too far, but then that yeah, made exactly. it so that you could then <laughs> relax back into something that was natural and worked really well. And so, yeah, exactly. Mm. And I, and I'm, I'm fully aware, like there's some beginners out there, like, yeah, my content is perfect for them. It's helping them. I know it because I have contact with them, and it's just a wonderful feeling. Mm-hmm. But I, I know there's a lot of great pipers out there that are probably not even aware I exist or my content, and that's fine. But they might come across my content and be like, who is this ding-dong teaching this? Like, he's like he's not even that good. And like, what if, but like, I've, maybe it's rather than being embarrassed about thinking of people like that, I I've reframed it and being like, you know what? They might see me and be like, this Yahoo has over 5,000 subscribers and he's got a crappy camera and he mm-hmm. like, like, and they might think I could do way better than this. And it's like, good, go start, go start your there's, own thing. Right? You know, like, like it, yeah. so I'm like, you know, like, cause it's easy to sit back and have an idea and never do anything with it. Yeah. And, you know, like, like, uh, you know, seeing someone like, um, oh, well, this person teaches lessons online, Mm -hmm. this big piper. And yeah, they've been a pipe major for 40 years and they've won gold medals at Worlds and they like, and they have a website and teach online. Well, that doesn't get me motivated to do anything, right? Like, but it's like, oh, this is just a normal person and he's out there doing this. Hey, maybe I could join that pipe and drum band that I just didn't think I could or hey maybe I could start that YouTube channel on on my Yulian pipes or or like like whatever it is it it might be teaching bagpipers online or it might be 
you know something a little bit a little bit different niche but like i don't know i i kind of that's one reason i i don't want to get completely perfected you know and not yeah. have humor and not people see oh he made a mistake there or oh like you know like like the one video i think it was scotland the brave where i'm hiking up this hill and i hadn't played my pipes in about a month and then i went out to the mountains and shot all these videos mm -hmm. um and it was cold and it was windy and my pipes were going out of tune and my fingers were cold and it was the last video i shot and and then uh the but then I kind of messed up the tempo and missed the grip or something. And, mm. But it was just like the lighting was perfect and I was just like done. And I tried it one more time after, but the sun went behind clouds and just wasn't visually that nice of a video. And yeah. I, so I just like, well, whatever, I'll just go with the one. It's a little bit crappier piping, but it's it's the better video. And for, yeah. for a very beginner, they don't even notice those mistakes. And right. I was like, well... For people who are good at piping, they'd be, what, this guy's learning? Oh, well, maybe I should say yes to, you know, those three people who keep asking me for lessons. Uh, and I say no because, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not that good of a piper. Well, yeah. if he's doing lessons, I'll do no, You know, absolutely. so I'm, I'm like, well, it could, it could motivate people. I don't mind being the, the clown that motivates people to do good things. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the niche someone has to fill. It, it, it does yeah. feel to me like there's a... <clears throat> Like, I can understand, I, I have some friends who get really, really annoyed when, like, what they would call, like, sub-optimal piping is put online, you know? Mm. And, and, like, I guess I can understand sometimes they'll make a point of, like, maybe, maybe if piping, if not very good piping is presented as if it were good piping, that, like, this misrepresents the art form or the instrument or something. Like, I guess there's probably some sort of argument to be made in that direction. But I just kind of feel like, no, in general, let's shed that because... Like you're saying, if enough, if it, it's like it's there's a wider thing that happens even outside of piping, where like if you take the few sort of heroes of the thing, and I feel like this happens, this is like present in some of the maybe worst aspects of like nationalism and and some of the ugly sides of organized religion and all kinds of stuff. Where if you take mm -hmm. if you take a few heroes and turn them into godlike figures and put them on pedestals then that becomes the standard by which us normies are judging ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's just not, I mean, like there is a place for an amazing professional bagpiper to do like amazing performances. And that's what I listen to day to day on my, you know, in my car and on my headphones and stuff. And those are the YouTube videos I look up to go like, wow, that is amazing, you know? And sometimes it's something to aspire to. For me personally, more often it's a way to just, be amazed at someone else's skill and I know I'll never be there you know I'm just yeah <laughs> just, just really love enjoying it you know but but if there's nothing in between if there's no like like you say like normal people just putting out content then where's the context for me as an also normal person to think I can do this too you know mm -hmm. if, if it's all just the impossible heroes and you know not to pontificate too much here right but it's like if it's all video clips of people who first of all have godlike ability but then also potentially did 40 takes you know and this is yeah. the very best of <laughs> yeah. all of them and then there's that right. human thing we were talking about at the beginning right where now i'm going to take what i saw in that video and assume that that is baseline normal for that person and then i'm going to yeah. take what i know about my worst practice session and consider that baseline normal for me <laughs> yeah you yeah, know exactly. it's like it's just and it, it's it's not it has a strong potential to do, to turn people away from learning the instrument because they think I could never do that rather than, or, or they've started trying and they give up because they go, I'm never going to be there. I've been, I've been trying for two years and I still can't play like so-and-so, you know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to, it's like we're, we're self-sabotaging as a community in some ways when we do too much of that. There's got to be room for people who aren't godlike to also have content out there because that makes the rest of us who aren't godlike feel like we can keep going and it's fun, you know? Mm-hmm, exactly. Let me clam and off the soapbox now. No, I, this was something I was hoping to bring up with you because I, and I hope it doesn't ruffle too many. <laughs> I hope you don't lose a bunch of subscribers. <laughs> well, well, again, you know, and again, that's like, but, this is but the same yeah, kind of thing. Is, like, I don't want to say yeah. too much because I, I, I'm a, I love the professional, amazing bagpipers. I don't want that to go away. Please, no. That's, I, I need that every day. You know, I listen and watch mm -hmm. these videos. So I need it. I'm just trying to say, like, let's get some stuff in the middle as well, you know? Yeah. And, like, I really think it helps looking at another instrument where it's like, 
you know, because they're, you know, no one in the guitar world is giving someone heck because they're not playing a chord properly. Those are just two finger chords. You can't do that. You know, yeah. people won't know what a guitar sounds like. You know, you're putting a bad name out for guitar. It's like, no, it like it, every every guy or a gal and, and their dog is playing guitar. Like, you know, and it's it's not making guitar any less popular. In fact, it makes it more popular. And, right. you know, when someone sees an amazing guitar, like the Dire Straits, Mark Knopfler, I think. Yeah, I think he's one of my favorites. Like, mm. when someone, it doesn't take away from him. Like, no one, you know, right. like, like, it's, you know, I think the popularity of the instrument the more people trying basic stuff on an instrument is is huge and that's i like the 3d bagpiping guy yeah he's in the states i i can't remember his name i think you had him on yeah 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 like just like it's like we we've tried so and i like just in history we've made bagpiping such not a not an instrument you can just get going on right Mm -hmm. like for and and I think it's kind of out of trying to protect the tradition but then actually we I think we are at more risk of losing the tradition altogether if you know right, if that's yeah. our attitude so I I don't know I I think the the more the merrier and and having a, a workable sound of sounds good set of pipes at a decent value that people like you can buy it like my I have a guitar. My friend got it for like ten bucks on the buy and sell, and it's perfectly playable. Like you can get right. a guitar cheap that's playable, and and no one is knocking on your door going like, "Hey, that's not you're not playing real guitar music." Like that right. doesn't sound like Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits. It's right. Like, yeah, I, I I know, right? <laughs> like <laughs> like, but you can still have fun with it and get into music, and who knows where that music journey will will lead. You know, maybe you'll just play on your own in the evenings. Maybe you'll play at a campfire. And I, I would just love bagpiping to have a little bit more of that, you know, attitude. Like, it's not about it has to be this way, it's right or it's wrong kind of yeah. kind of thing. So I, I, I do get some interesting comments from time to time because I have some videos. Like, a lot, most of my content, I'm breaking down embellishments, but... I usually give a embellishment free version and then I have a couple of tunes that I just go through a whole tune with no embellishments, like really simple yeah. stuff. And those tend to be the videos that people get the most upset on. <laughs> oh, but sure. also they're the videos that people are the most excited about. It's like, Oh, I've, you know, I've tried like four times, never gotten anywhere. And now I can actually play this. It's so, you know, it's, um, I, I spent a long time, yeah. a, a long time as one of the people who thought that, it wasn't good to learn a melody without the embellishments. It, right. It, it, like a very long time. Like it's only been very recently that I've realized like, oh, it's okay to play a simplified version. <laughs> like that's actually yeah. probably good because you actually get started learning a little more directly. <laughs> right. And and I think, yeah, it like depends what your goals are. Like sure. if your goal is to solo compete or be with this band or what. Yeah, sure. You should. But if you just like want to play for yourself or whatever. And, and like I found... Um, when I, because I seen a lot with my small pipes, and yeah. I, mean, I, I started doing that when I first got them. So I was like, and especially in university when I was playing them more. So, and I find when I sing with the small pipes, I don't think embellishments. If mm. they happen, they happen. Sometimes I add more embellishments to fit the words. Like, and sometimes I actually take out embellishments to make it mm. more simple, but it's not really, I'm thinking about my singing. And I'm noticing my playing. I'm not thinking, oh, I should do an embellishment here necessarily. So I'm just kind of watching what my fingers do, but I'm not thinking about what they need to do. <laughs> they, right. They, so that kind of started, that loosened my grip on embellishments. <laughs> loosened your and, grip. Nice. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> nice. I just had just had to. <laughs> <laughs> and then, too, just small pipes in general, I find, like, now that I'm playing with this celtic band a little bit more this last year um i'm finding some of the stuff they do is so ripping fast yeah like just keeping up with this fiddle player like there's there's not much for embellishments happening like i never played i know rakes of mallow is one that there's a bagpipe version floating around out there but honestly I, i really like this fiddle version better um and like they're 
you know, I, I as I've gotten more familiar with the tune, I've found where I can kind of sneak embellishments in here and there and do different things. But for the most part, it just sounds good with very little or basic embellishments and just going nine zero. <laughs> like it, yeah, like yeah. It, and, and so that playing with this group, I only started with them, you know, uh, this year. Or so uh, I'm almost a full year. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like that too, kind of you know, again, sh- kind of shifted my perspective on embellishments again, like, oh, maybe on small pipes, um, it, you know, em- embellishments are, are a little different than the Highland pipes, or depending on the song, it's a little different. And then also, like, with the trumpet background, mm-hmm. like, I still remember our high school teacher, like, t- telling us, like, if you're playing the same phrase of music a second time in a piece you never play it the same way <laughs> and bagpiping is like the opposite it's like you always play it the same way if it comes up it, again in the song yeah, if you have the slightest difference then that's a that's a yeah. knock on your score sheet right there yeah so that's like so sometimes with tunes i'm writing i'll purposely like kind of change it up which is very unbagpiperish mm. where it's like well the first time it happens in the tune we do it this way and it like sometimes the embellishments start are very basic, like a uh, grace note or something. But by the end of the tune, it's coming out as a Tor Lewis, like it. Yeah. Because we we can't ha- do volume, so let's right. work have some with way something to, to accelerate things. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think, uh, so I'm on my soapbox now, but I think a mixture of embellishments, non embellishments. I feel like that's more traditional. If we go back pre military pre-militarization yeah if i could say that word of the instrument right like of course military pipe and drum band you want everybody doing the same thing that's part of that of mindset of like you uniformity. wear the same clothes you get up yeah. at the same time you do everything and when when they say charge you all leave the <laughs> yeah. you know you leave the pit and charge at the same like it it that so you perform perform on the battlefield every action has to follow that same mentality like and i think of piping pre british army in the in scotland is like more of a language dialect like oh i can tell by how you're playing you know this tune that you must be from this area right oh, like it's yeah. like you know yeah. like there's just this little like you know this is the language and the music here and this this is the accent here and this is and and it's an oral tradition so you just like it predates sheet music. So you're learning from this teacher who plays it this way. And yeah. they've added over the years of their 40 year piping <laughs> life, they've had these nuances cause they like it. And now you're learning those nuances and now you build on those nuances. Cause you know, like, so uh, it's kind of a more interesting dynamic growing kind of thing rather than it's black and white is played this way because that's the black on the sheet music and it's not played this way like right that, so, that's, it's interesting too yeah. that, like to think about it being if you go back far enough an oral tradition and how we naturally assume that of course there's going to be regional dialects and regional accents when it's with the spoken word yeah and the connection of oral learning and how that you know it's not it's not at all unreasonable to think like i mean in fact i think I think it was on a recent episode of Way Too Twag's Bagpipe and History podcast that he had a story from Seamus Ennis about about an Illin pipe tune and that like Seamus said something about he just had this little throwaway thing where he said something about like this person was from Ireland and I think he must have been from the west of Ireland. And I did wonder for just a second, like, why did he oh, why, why does he think right. that, that person must have been from West of Ireland? Is it because the story sounds regional or is it because the way the tune is played sounds regional? Right. Yeah. yeah. And maybe there's more of a connection to that in other kinds of piping. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe I've beat this dead horse already. Like I want to make clear, like the the militarized, everything's exactly the same kind of piping is a skill set and is amazing and impressive when you can play each part exactly the same mm-hmm. over and over again like that takes a lot of focus and skill and especially when you do it in a large group i love that kind of piping i guess the reason this comes up in conversation so often is that if that is the water where we've been swimming in you and i alec if that's where we're coming mm-hmm. from then what we're discovering is there's other stuff too and so of course we contrast it against what we're used to it's not to yeah. degrade it it's just to say like well this is what i'm used to but i'm i'm discovering that there are these other traditions these other ways of playing these other ways of approaching the music that i wasn't aware of until recently and it, that's interesting and exciting e- hmm 
I lost you, Alec. Can you still hear me? Ah, you're back. I lost you for a second there, sorry. Oh, you still there? Yeah, I got you now. You hear me? I, I'll keep talking so that if you... If you mm. <laughs> okay, I see. We, We're I, back. Yeah, you hear me good? You hear yeah. Me okay? oh. Some reason my internet cut out. <laughs> no sweat. No sweat. I think I think that's okay. a decent spot for anyway for me to because I've been keeping you all, all morning here and I still wanted to ask you about. Um, mm. I, oh, can I, I just say? Oh, yeah. About, say, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't want people to think I'm knocking the 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 pipe and drum the militarization right, like yeah. my favorite thing of the Highland Games is is the mass bands because right. there there is something about like there's something about listening to solo piper do his own nuanced version of a tune that's cool For there's sure. something about having five hundred pipers doing all the same thing at all the same time and just like that's that's a whole nother level of cool I think. People are resistant to one because they think it's going to replace the other. But I think no, we can have both. Yeah. Both exist, right? This is like a yes, and we, situation. Yeah, it's not a like. Well, if we allow people to play Star Wars on the bagpipes, we're going to lose. You know, we're all these lose other the brain. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Or if we allow someone to play without embellishments, no one's going to be playing embellishments in ten years. No, yeah. no. Of right. course, of course not. There, there's room. Like I really feel there's room for both. I just happen to live. Like, if I lived close enough, I'd play in a pipe and drum band. I just happen to be two and a half hours from the nearest yeah. band that's, you know, I'm an hour and 15 minutes from a grade five band. But, like, if I was playing, I wanted to play in a higher level band, I'm, I'm two and a half hour one way drive away. So, like, I'm just in a situation where this is what works for me. And this yeah. is kind of what I really enjoy. But it's like, yeah, it's not a, you can't have, you can't have this freedom or basic musicality with the pipes and and then lose this 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 band tradition of course not i i think we can have both yeah yeah we're, so we're preaching uh, what you might call a big tent bagpiping here yeah <laughs> there's room for all of it <laughs> exactly <laughs> now now alec we you and i talked about um doing a special t-shirt project Oh yes! By, yeah. by the time this episode goes out, I intend to have that set up, so we can talk about it right now, oh, and then awesome. I'll have it set up by then. Sure. I, I, you sent the sketches to me, and I've had the elements for design ideas up in my in my design software for weeks now. Oh, and that's so, cool. You know, I'm not ignoring it in any way, and 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 right now I'll tell you, and I guess we'll see if the final product comes out like this. But I'll send you some ideas to kind of approve or or cha make changes to. But like my thought right now is that it would be cool to do like a a t-shirt with kind of a kind of a very like natural colored t-shirt to start with, like kind of a tan sand kind of color. Um, yeah, and then have a crest on the front that looks similar to something like a uh, like a Parks and Forest Service kind of kind of looking oh, thing. Oh, okay, yeah. As if get, get bagpipe ready, you know, were the like the forestry uh, uh, department, you know, and right. the person wearing the shirt is a ranger, you know, <laughs> and then and then on the back oh, probably cool some idea. sort of motif with the the bagpipes and trees and stuff like that. But but do you yeah. want to maybe tell maybe talk a little bit about like the idea behind the you know, the whole, why, why yeah. you make it about trees and stuff? Right, yeah, of course. I, I will say, I just, I really love what you're doing, like, the kind of online farmer's market of the, like, to support different groups and stuff uh, and have a place where they can have their T-shirts or, or uh, you know, content like, like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, plug for bagpipes. Yeah. If anybody out there wants their man yeah. on there, email me. We'll make it happen. Yeah, because that, that's something I'd looked into before, and it just, oh, it seemed like too much work. And I'm really trying to be more environmentally conscious. I'm like the failing environmentalist. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> run my gas mower, and I was driving tractor yesterday. And mm. like, I'm like, oh, I'm still burning lots of fossil fuels, but definitely becoming more environmentally conscious and you know the there's like and i see this in our facebook group like people will join and they're just trying to sell t-shirts from from pakistan or, or wherever right sure, like sure, they, yeah. they have no interest in bagpiping they don't ask my permission they just say you know just and so there's a lot of cheesy cheap bagpipe shirts out there online and it's like well if i I do do something online I'd rather like selling shirts I'd, I want it to be something people like but uh, also it's not just another 
it's not just another cheap shirt made in a way that it's not great for people or great for the environment. And, right. you know, I, I want to go down a different path. So, um, yeah, so I, I was kind of like, well, maybe if it was more environmentally sourced or huma- good humanitarian sourcing shirt and, mm-hmm. and somehow helps someone, like maybe helps a charity or something like a, you know, they have those things that you buy this and percentage of the profit, you know, goes to this charity. And right. I was like, well, what charity would Pipers care about? And I thought of the black Blackwood, how much we yeah. use Blackwood. We want those which, forests conserved <laughs> so we can harvest the trees later. <laughs> yeah, which... We think about Blackwood being the gold standard one for piping, and certainly it has for piping and oboes and clarinets and things like that. Yeah. But um, again, if we think more traditional, well, pre before Africa was really you know um, uh, colonized, you know, colonized, like there was no Blackwood, so not so not a ton I, of Blackwood growing yeah. naturally in Scotland. <laughs> <No>. So, <laughs> so I'm really fascinated by like the Quiet Piper. And oh yeah. Then, so I That's actually I ordered a the first set of pipes because uh, I got one set of pipes for my grade twelve grad and then my small pipes after winning the fishing derby when mm-hmm. I was like thirteen or fourteen, and I've never bought another I've never got another set of pipes but I ordered some from the Quiet Piper in January so oh I'm, I'm just so excited how long about, are you waiting <laughs> though those. he's got to have a, he, I'm sure he has a long wait list yeah he's, I he's think he's a very popular maker these days isn't he yeah I told him I was getting them for my birthday. And he's like, well, when's your birthday? I was like, oh, January 18th is like 10 days away. He's like, how about your birthday in two <laughs> yeah. or three years? <laughs> but I said, but I recognize it's, it's my birthday for next year. Not this there you year. go, yeah. So I, I think he said at the time it was it was like a 10 or 12 month wait list, yeah. I think, if well, I remember and right. Let so. me sneak in a plug for my buddies over at Moral Bagpipes as well. They also do like like different woods. Um, oh, okay. And Are they in the U.S.? They're in Utah, yeah. Oh, I have to look them up. Yeah. And that's not to take Moral away from Felsberg pipes. either. Felsberg is no. just busy enough that I don't think he would yeah. mind me mentioning that there are other pipers, other yeah. makers that are also doing like local woods and alternative hardwoods. Right. And, and of yeah. course, we already mentioned Dave, who's doing it out of 3D printing. Um, yeah. And stuff affordable and stuff too. But. Yeah. Like affordable and good for the environment. And and then there's, there is a guy in, uh, I can't remember his name. I know Jeremy from We Too Wig plays some of his pipes i think oh is it john I was swain asking him about him can't, caldwood pipes or i can't remember but he uses a lot of like yew and plum wood and like r- woods that you know people would have used in in scotland because i know ago. i know i know that jeremy's is also on felsberg's um wait list he's also getting some from from oh, the piper that, uh, that aren't awesome. there yet but um but I know that he his his border pipes he recently got were from from John Swain. Okay, that that could be. But it. he's got yeah. a, he's got a few different he's got a lot of different instruments really. So so I don't yeah. know. it might be it might be one of the other set. I'm not sure <laughs> I know I kind of I'd love to go to his house for a weekend. <laughs> oh, dude, seriously, he 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 and John Charles, uh, who's done some guest hosting on Way Too Twags uh, Bagpipe History podcast, they got together a little while ago and the the photos they put on social media of just the big pile in John Charles's living room of all of their bagpipes combined <laughs> <laughs> made me so jealous, man. That's awesome. Yeah, like border pipes. I've never heard of border pipes before I kind of yeah. started get bagpipe ready and going along. Yeah. yeah, like there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, so, but a lot of these cool pipes are made with Blackwood. <laughs> right. And yes. so I wanted to really... Um, I thought, oh, that could be a charity if one exists that Pipers would care about is preserving the Blackwood Forest. And it's also like helping people their sustainable practice. It, like, it's not just like, well, let's run a community out of their homes right, so we can yeah. plant Blackwood trees. No, it's like integrating local knowledge and resources and, and making it, you know, making it uh, like sustainable from a humanitarian perspective as well and right. incorporating culture so and so yeah i found this charity and had swapped a couple of emails and i think that would be a really a really good one i think their logo is don't let the music tree go silent <laughs> you know? that's lovely like, so yeah so I, like yeah so if we get these shirts rolling it'd be you know not your average cheap shirt made cheaply and cheesy it'd be like uh 
you know, definitely a higher price point, but you're paying for something you know is good quality and you know came from a good place with treating the people good and, and right. also going to a cause to, hey, let's, you know, maybe in the past we didn't know any better and we could have been harvesting blackwood trees more humanely or better for the cultures that were there and well let's let's try to change things moving forward because we got to treat the trees right if we're going to be able to continue continue having them yeah absolutely yeah well so then in the show notes below what i'll have is a link straight to the shirt that as we talk doesn't yet exist but yeah. will by the time <laughs> this comes out and uh, and yeah I've, i have already double checked on sourcing the t-shirt itself we can get a shirt made a, of at least some recycled materials if not entirely recycled materials and awesome. from a from a non sweatshop non child labor kind of situation for manufacturing yeah. as well <laughs> yeah right and then the printing will have done awesome. all the all the printing done with bagpipe swag is done in the closest possible local shop to where the order is placed and so it reduces how many miles each item travels um, awesome and uh, that'll, that'll and that's something I hadn't up. even thought of right mm-hmm. like I was all, uh, and you're, so you're already doing stuff that, you know, considering the environment of, I, I'm also, I a hadn't failing, even thought of, so I was like, that's man, really I'm cool. With you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also somebody who, who uses a lot of electricity and gasoline, but feels really guilty about it the whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. the other thing too, is that I will, um, this month, the month in which this episode is coming out, I'll do, I, I, I do a prize drawing every once in a while for any Patreon supporters of Droning On. And so oh, that awesome. will be the prize drawing this month is um, uh, uh, one of these t-shirts. And so that uh, will be announced in the show notes and on social media and stuff like that as well. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, I like that, the shirt uh, you sent me, thanks so much. Yeah, it's, it was one of the recycled or partially yeah, recycled that's right. clothing that shirts, the, like the, the long right. sleeve with the Beatles. Yeah, what did, what did you it's think awesome. Of that? It oh, it's awesome. It's a perfect fit. It's like great quality. I've I've worn it in some bagpipe videos. Yeah, so. I saw one of them yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, I, I love that shirt. It's awesome. So I'm excited man. for these ones. <laughs> so that's that's the that's the thing. That's Alec, and that's get bagpipe ready, and that's the cool T-shirt, and that's. That's yeah. that's the episode, man. Unless you awesome. want to, you got something, some wisdom you want to drop on us, but as we fade away, uh, I would I would just say like, well, if you want to learn the bagpipes, check out my channel. <laughs> but but really, if you're if there's something you want to do, like don't don't be afraid to fail at it over and over because that's that's how you're going to figure it out. Like that's that's how our piping gets better. That's how I've created this business, and and yeah, it's always good to. to include my-